everybody. It is the 13th of March. We are here in the club. As you can see, we got a great crew today. We've also got a, a few of us on Zoom as well, which is great as always. And we are going to start the party today with the guys. We have some videos that have, uh, you know, normally our ladies have got all their videos. Our guys are lacking. So today the guys have brought stuff. We also have ladies have got stuff too. So we'll share some of that. So Todd, why don't you tell us about your video? Um, and this is just a short little video. Um, I saw it. I saw it in the paper last week that the Tucson Garden Railway Society was having an open house at uh, eight different houses. And so uh, I didn't have a lot of time. I got to one of them. So this video is uh, uh, one of the houses. Um, the the video doesn't do it justice because the amount of detail that this man puts into his garden railway is just extraordinary. Cool. Just absolutely, it just when you get there and see everything, it just it's absolutely. And he's he's pretty fascinating too. So nice. Uh, That's right. two minutes long. Well, let's check it out. Let's see what you got. Right. I agree. Yeah, too, yeah, go ahead, Grace. Too short uh, with each clip because once you once you take it off the front end and take it off the back end, there's very little time left for the actual picture. Yeah. So I agree. Yeah. I don't. You don't agree. <laughs> yep. It moves. Um, well, it certainly moves and it goes with the music. Yep. Yeah. I, I think it's just one of those things, especially when there's all these little detail things. Yeah, those details. I'm interested in that. And again, it's not like you have to go from, let's say, four seconds to 10 seconds, hmm. but maybe one second or two yeah, seconds. Yeah, but just keep your interest in it. It keeps moving. For, for me, it's like a teaser. So now I want to go. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because no matter, even if you gave it more time, right. you're not going to be able to see what this guy did. Right. I mean, right. I, I thought it was perfect. Okay, good. Well, you know, that's the, I think, again, You're that's perfect. the big thought. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the beauty of it. We all have our opinions about yeah. something, whether it's too short, too long, whatever. 
um, th that was just my thing right out of the box. I just yeah. thought, God, I, mm. that's a great, these are great, this is great. Let me see it just a little more. Yeah, I mean, I did take clips from five seconds down to four, yeah. you know, and then with the fade in, shut sure. out and everything. Yeah. yeah. Because then you're really at four, you're at two seconds. Yeah, I figure I probably need to take it. it goes going to add a second, take two to three clips out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's you know what that's a great that's a great way to do it as well, folks. Is you don't you can extend that clips just a little bit, get rid of a couple of shots. You know you don't have to just jackhammer it. So we have you know all this stuff. But that's a way to do it as well, because if you're trying to keep it in the confines of that song, right, and that's your concern, then right. I'd say knock out two or three clips and then extend just a little bit. Yes, sir. You said it before. Less is more. Well, less is more in terms of the thing that's yeah. nice is he had a nice short yes. video. It was not a long video, which is great. And it does agree. keep your interest, which yeah. is good. I, I think and here's the other thing, too, folks, when we talk about all this stuff. We're really nitpicking. I mean, yeah. we're not. And we're not. We're not doing it to the point of saying, "Oh, Todd, you're horrible. You suck. Yeah. This is horrible." It's just we are. Sherry and Lee said you were great, and Phil just reinforced it. <laughs> and he took it away. Yes, he did. <laughs> I think that was a fun piece. If you want to see Garden Railways, look on the internet. Yeah, and they have hour-long looks at. A layout like that. Okay. So I mean, maybe that's shady in my opinion because I've seen so many of. Them. Did you know that this person is going to have this at the house? That well, I read it in the paper last week. Meaning that this person, they have the house tour, and then they're going to. He's got this great uh, railway set. Well, all more. That's what it was about. Oh, it was old. It's a tour. Thing. And you oh, know, gotcha. like it wasn't a house tour. Okay. It was a guard railway tour. Oh, railway tour. If you, so. if you read our newsletter. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was teaching in my class when that was going on. You know, we have a lot of opportunities that we have in large edition. Yeah. And I tell you, this uh, Two Sergeant Garden Railway Society is amazing. Yeah. What these people do, and basically they just set them up for a short period of time because it's too cold in the winter months to, sure. to set them up, and then it gets too hot mm. in the summer. Mm. So there's just a sweet spot that they mm. do. In mid March, okay, basically, where it's two days, and uh, I, I went to the one that Todd filmed, and Todd will, Todd will affirm this there is so much detail, yeah, and it takes up the guy's whole front yard. Hmm. And uh, oh, it's his front yard, it's yeah, his front yard, oh, yeah. Wow. and uh, so it's all these trestles and everything hmm. else, and just dioramas all over the place, hmm. you know. So, if you're in the miniatures, like if you go to the miniature museum, you'll love Garden Rail. Uh, if you like playing with choo-choo trains, you'll love Garden Rail. Okay. There's just so much for it. Uh, we got a little bit of a taste of it uh, earlier this week, the last week when we went to the uh, Gaston Pacific Division Toy Train Operating Museum. Basically, if you're in the model railroading, that's the place to go. Uh, and they got a Garden Rail set up out there. Yeah. Well. well, cool. Well, thank you for that. It's interesting. It's good to know that there's stuff like that out there. Yeah. yeah. All right, Phil, why don't you tell us about your video? Uh, oh. it's, it's uh, drugs. Somebody last week said, why don't you ever show anything here? Oh, boy. Oh. It wasn't me, was it? it? This is it. Uh, as some of you may or may not know, I teach at uh, OLLI, which is the U of A's thing, whatever it is. Uh, and I teach uh, Hollywood history and film production. And this is a reject from one of my classes on... Uh, title of the class is Made in Arizona, and it's about films that were made here over the years. And because the legislature pulled the tax credit, we don't make films here anymore, oh. or very, very few. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. back. Yeah. Uh, Westerns used, to, this used to be the place to make Westerns. It's now New Mexico and Canada, mm. uh, because the the first 50000 you spend in New Mexico, you get it back from the state. Wow. So that's why producers go there. Uh, and th this is a film, this was uh, supposed to be in this class, and I didn't like the film that much, and um, I had too much time. So I do hour and a half classes, and it's an hour of video and a half hour of yakking. Okay. Uh, so here it is. This is called um, Bat Guano. Bat Guano. All right. <laughs> 
Well, this should be good. What does Bat Guano, Hollywood, and the Grand Canyon have in common? In 1959, they all came together in a movie called Edge of Eternity. The film starred Cornell Wilde and Edgar Buchanan. It was filmed on the edge and in the center of Arizona's giant ditch, the Grand Canyon. The film's plot revolves around theft and murder, but the real star was the canyon and a giant cable car system that was built for only one reason, bat guano. That's right, bat poop. The guano was, in what geologists thought, was a huge deposit of the nitrogen-rich material in a cave on the north side of the West Canyon. The guano was at first thought to have been left there by prehistoric man-sized carnivorous bats. That story, which still circulates, was a total fantasy. Little free-tailed bats had simply used the cave for a bathroom. The guano was the perfect fertilizer and was sold in three pound packs for 59 cents. It was billed as nature's perfect plant food. The problem was how to get to the cave. In 1957, a company, U.S. Guano Corporation, yes, that was its name, strung an 8,000 foot cableway from the north side of the canyon to the south. The guano was vacuumed out of the cave and carried by the tramway to the south rim and then to be trucked to Kingman for distribution. The tramway became the perfect backdrop for the dramatic final scene in the movie as our hero fought the bad guy on a guano car suspended hundreds of feet above the Colorado River. And of course, a young woman who had been taken hostage also goes along for the ride. In the end, Cornell Wilde saves the girl, himself, and the guano. The movie may have made money, but the mining venture failed. The whole $3.5 million project turned out to be a bust. The miners were only able to take out about a thousand pounds of material from the cave. U.S. Guano Corporation went bankrupt. Today, the cable is gone, but the tramway's headhouse and tower still sit like sentinels on the canyon's south rim on the Wallapai tribe's land, and at a place, of course, called Guano Point. The cave and the remains of the tramway are just down the river from the West Canyon's major tourist attraction, the Horseshoe Grand Canyon Skywalk. The tourists pay $70 to walk out over 4,000 feet above the canyon floor on a two and a half inch thick glass walkway. The whole thing is made of a million pounds of steel and 83,000 pounds of glass. The guano miners got the same view for free. Hey Ward, take us back and be careful. But it didn't make the cut. Why? Uh, that was great. So I didn't think it was that good in, in the time. Oh, much time. There must be the rest of your class must be really good because I thought that was very interesting. Yeah. I love the clips. It's good to see the old stuff. Well, they haven't really made movies here for probably forty years. Hmm. I mean, in any, I mean, in in the seventies they were making them. This is nineteen fifty nine, hmm. and this is about when they started making. Them. And they made lots of westerns here, uh, and they make great stories. Sure, I mean all the big, the classic movie actresses and actors from Hollywood were um, hanging out in Tucson, but not anymore. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you what the uh, and I've said this before to you, your narration, his voice is so good, and just there's something about it that's very authoritative and informative. I don't know what it is, but I just and fascinating. When you're talking, your scripting is great, your narration is great. Gee whiz. <laughs> Can I borrow five bucks? <laughs> uh, that money will come later. Oh. 
Anyway, I thought it was a fun piece, and oh. it's just the kind of thing I, I probably make one or two of these every week. That size? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, about that. Well, I'll tell you what, you do your research, and it really shows in these videos. I, I would imagine being in this class would be really good. Your well, class. I'm, I'm yes. your videos, and if you're making a couple of these every week. Oh. <laughs> I, I just have dozens of them. Okay. Well, good. Well, uh, because it, these I, I've taught like five different courses now at Ollie, and uh, again, they're hour and a half classes. It takes about an hour of video uh, for that hour and a half class, and then a half hour of discussion. Sure. Great. And the one I'm doing now in Hitchcock is very well attended. For some reason, people are still very interested in Alfred. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's too. It's movies that we remember, right? Growing up, and you've seen these things, so it's not like it's some person that's only been out for ten years, and you're like, oh yeah, you did one movie, and you haven't done anything since. Right. Somebody like that is a master, scaring the crap out of us all these years. <laughs> I, I'm amazed that in this class, I just started uh, what last week and doing it again Thursday. The uh, how many people had not seen? I mean, I knew Alfred Hitchcock, I knew the name, but right. they had not seen his films. Yeah. A lot of them had not seen, I bring up a film, never seen. Right. Oh. Yeah. What was the name of this film, Phil? Which film? This one. Really? Oh, this is called Edge of Eternity, yeah. 1959. Cornell Wilde, who's one of my favorite actors, because he was a nice guy. Uh, and I love this film. I mean, it's stupid plot but right <laughs> i think part of that but it really shows scenery. it shows the canyon and it's shot in cinemascope yeah um and in 35 millimeter cinemascope and the print i was able to get it's pretty good it's not hmm. too bad almost all that footage except the stills of right the, were from the film oh huh. and that you cannot show that on the replay oh really yeah the film's fine. Now but you the, tell me. It, yeah, the film is fine, except the music would be a potential issue. Oh, I'll I'll look and see if it's in. Uh, everybody know what fair use is? Yeah. Okay. Well, there are several different things you have to meet for fair use, and one of them is an educational setting. Yeah. Um, and so I don't have a real problem, but music licensing is an issue. So. I'm real careful about that. All right. Well, you know, the good thing is when you go to YouTube, when I post this, you will either see this section or you won't. <laughs> if we get dinged, then I, I will have to cut it out. But if we don't get dinged, then that'll be it. So, well, thank you, sir. Yeah. Good yeah. job. Now we know where they got the classic scenes for Film and Louise. There you go. And <laughs> Moonraker. There you go. All well, Film and Louise, part of it was filmed here. Oh, sure. No, yeah. Um, we rewatched uh, Tombstone, the 1995 version. The whole thing was shot in Mezcal, and it was really fun to turn that, on. That's the that's not true, but it sounds good. <laughs> it, it, most of it. It looked like it. A, a high percentage was, yeah. Okay, a high percentage. Anyway, I was interested in you that. I know, spoiler. Oh, yeah. Now, where the birds sound. <laughs> John's not here. John. John's not here. Hi, John. He's not here. No. Um, all right. Well, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, well, time to go ahead. I was just going to say for anyone who's interested in the old movie memorabilia, there's a restaurant. Hotel Charles on River Road. It's a steakhouse and it's filled with all these old outfits and props and things like that from uh, the movie days here. Hmm. That's where they used to hang out. Love I thought they did. Well, cool. Well, thank you for that. Uh, Larry, why don't you tell us about your video, please? Well, it's a uh, time lapse, one minute. I was sitting on Holly's back patio there and uh, admiring the sunset on the Santa Rita's. So the next day I set up my camera for a little under two hours and uh, extracted this minute of sunset. Cool. All right, let's check it out.
And what camera was that? It was on my Panasonic. On the Panasonic. My 15 year old heard of the Panasonic. Yeah. Super. Uh, it was set on uh, one second. One second per. Uh, sorry, up. Uh, yeah, one frame every second. second. And it ran for an hour and three quarters. The camera ran for an hour and three quarters. <laughs> you and can I chopped just... out about uh, four or five pieces and uh, put maybe, I can't remember, four of them together and speeded it up uh, to 300. Hmm. Yeah. Your, uh, the thing you could really tell that you did. For anybody that ever shoots time lapses, especially with clouds, there was he had a smoothness because you're shooting one frame every second, and the clouds are moving. If you let's say he was doing one frame every five seconds, as an example, the clouds would get kind of jerky and they don't smooth. So that was really nice, Larry. And that color coming in, right? oh yeah, yeah. yeah. perfect timing. Well, it, it falls into my philosophy that. Uh, Better lucky than smart. <laughs> no, well done, definitely well done. And the, the other thing, I don't know if anybody saw it in the in the ground. You'd see the javelinas running through the yard. Did we? Anybody see that? Oh, I got to show that again. Yeah, hang on. Watch, watch the. I'll go about halfway in because it was after this. Here and here, I think. Hang on, I'm gonna share it. Are they in the foreground or? They're at the bottom of the frame and you'll see them come up through the valley and they go up to the house. There's about three or four of them. Yeah, that was fascinating. Hang on a second. Well, they were in a big hurry. <laughs> That's a nice little, little bonus that seeing something like that, too. I thought that, music, I thought that music was perfect. Yeah. 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 Music was great, too. Yeah. Great choice. Purple plan. Yeah. Right. Nice. Yeah. The, uh, doing time lapses is a lot of fun. Uh, the thing I would suggest if you're like out somewhere, take a chair. Uh, and, oh, yeah. And, uh, the first couple of times I would do some, I remember doing one in Oklahoma at this. There's a place called Pops. They have soda pop and they've got a big uh, soda bottle, neon, that's about 40 feet high. Well, I'm standing in the middle of this field across the street and I'm waiting for sun to go down. And I'm there for like two and a half hours and I'm just standing in the field. And then, then at one point I'm sitting on the ground and I'm sure somebody driving by thinking, what the hell is wrong with that? <laughs> so I always say, take a folding chair if you're going to do something. Or go to Holly's house and then you can have a cocktail. <laughs> Look, do you have your um, Canadian one? The one that did in Canada that you sent me? I don't remember which one it is. It's a time lapse sunset thing. Oh, that was really good. We'll have to bring that. Yeah, yeah, I may have it on, on the flash drive or with me. I don't have a lot of stuff. Okay. Well, no worries. Well, I'll tell you what, that was well done. Do you got it? See, you brought me here on all the shots. Sorry? Can you do a fixed exposure? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, That's you me. Can't put it on automatic. It, it doesn't work that way. It works hard. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Um, why don't you tell us, Linda, about your little video you've got here? <laughs> she said this is funny. Hey. I was um, happy to find voices where I've been a lot lately, which for actually for the last several months. And um, and I was taking a video of uh, Angelique, which is the horse that has recovered from amazing violence. Oh. And she's used to my camera, uh, which you'll see, but um, there's an expletive in there <laughs> that um, Equine Voices wants to show it on there in their uh, newsletter, but they, the expletive has to come out. <laughs> so we're either going to add- And I've been trying to do it on Pro Show, and I can't for the life of me figure out how to do it without cutting it. Right. So I know there's a way to drop the sound out on one sound and put something else in, but I, I can't do it on Pro Show. This is our project after class today. Okay. I will be helping, well, even though you're, yeah. yes, I know. Be your well, or I'll just be yeah. doing it and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, okay here we go.
I know, you're used to a camera now, aren't you? Hi, thank you. Yeah, I know. Oh, I just cleaned my lens. I love it. Oh, that guana. <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs> but they have, they, they yes. have big time donors that have, have not stopped donating for less than that. So they really, really, uh -huh. wow. At least we've all seen it. <laughs> yes. We know it's yeah. there. I would agree. So the newsletter can't. We'll do we'll do it one of two ways. I will either she she uh gave an electronic bead that we can insert over the top of that, or I would just take some audio somewhere else where there's just a little ambient noise and drop that on top of the shit, the oh shit. You'll never hear it. Oh, no, I think you should leave in the O, oh, because then people will know. Well, you, oh, so you like it to be <laughs> all free. Can you do an O oh, shoot? No. Or, oh, oh. <laughs> no, no, no. I like I, I, I like the O B. This O B. Yeah. There, you know, yes. Something was said. Some bad yeah. word went in there. Yeah. <laughs> but bad word. We'll, we'll do that after class today. Okay. That'll be great. I love it. Make sure you keep that original. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, we don't mind profanity in this group. We think it's funny. Well, that's true. And it was funny because I had just cleaned <laughs> Literally in, in my face, as you can see. Oh, boy. Well, there you go. Well, thank you for that. That's a good one. Beautiful. All right. Well, uh, Sherry Lee, why don't you tell us about your video, please? Oh, I'm so excited to share this video. <laughs> this is my. Are you being? You, was that being facetious? <laughs> well, I, <laughs> somewhat facetious. I just, it, it's been such a long journey to get this trip from Southeast Asia completed. So this is the final uh six days of the trip okay and i got that six days into like ten and a half minutes so i'm like quite proud of myself wow. we'll see what you guys think all right anyway it feels good to feel now i can like move on to the next project yeah or or try some of these fun things that i'm seeing and i got some grandkids stuff i want to do but it's like every my life has been on hold it feels like in order to yeah. complete these um, oh, this series of uh, video okay so I well let's check it out sabadika our extension was loaded with experiences beginning with the varied transportation to the bridge over river kwai and hellfire pass all aboard Train. Uh, we are in the first class of train. It's a commuter train, and uh, we're going to teach you some Thai word. You may need it. Sawadee uh, crab is mean greeting, and then uh, you want to say the the food is very delicious. You say aroy magma crab. Mahachai Station, huge seafood market. Ferry to cross Tachin River. Rickshaw through Tachalom. Then on to the bus for the remainder of the way to the River Kwai. We watched the bridge over River Kwai about World War II just prior to this trip. It laid the groundwork for an appreciation of what we were seeing. The bridge, also known as part of the Death Railway built by more than 60,000 POWs and 90,000 Asian slaves, still has its original tracks, though the bridge itself has been updated for safety. We stayed at Hintock River Camp, which was originally a British POW camp. Tents are used to this day in homage to its predecessor. Today, it is truly glamping at its finest.
Hellfire Pass, a railway cutting built with forced labor between 1942 and 1944. I wept while reading the accounts posted in the museum. Dying was easy. It was living that was hard. Survival meant more work, exhaustion, meager rations. Men needed a reason to keep going, family, vision, or refusal to yield to a hated enemy. Now, a fun boat ride on River Kwai. River Kwai is actually Kwai Noi, or small tributary. The famous bridge spanned the Mekong River, but was renamed to Kwai Yai, big tributary, in the 60s because of the movie. We also saw lots of amazing birds, but my pictures didn't turn out so great. Sorry to those of you who are birders. Lawa Cave is the largest cave in Kanchanaburi. Skeletons were found indicating habitation about 3,000 years ago. Erwin National Park, with its seven-tiered waterfall, lush forest, numerous caves and trails, is a favorite for locals and visitors alike. The waterfall is named Erwin after the three-headed white elephant of Hindu mythology. En route to the airport to Chiang Rai, we stopped at the tallest stupa in Thailand, with roots over 2,000 years old and relics of Buddha inside the top. The statue with a cow is a combo of Hindu and Buddhist. Beautiful airport arrival and beautiful hotel. The Cat and Cup Cafe was a fun visit. And Rosie made a lovely connection. A treat in the middle of an intersection before dinner with a live band. Then the Golden Triangle, Burma, Laos, and Thailand on the Mekong River. Famous for its opium production. Followed by lunch in the mountains via Put Put. We passed farms of tapioca, stevia, pineapple, rice, pot, paya, banana, cacao and sweet corn. And enjoyed conversation with a local teen studying English. A big highlight was an unexpected opportunity to visit the caves of the boys miraculously rescued in 2018. If you haven't seen 13 Lives, we highly recommend it. Being here was a very moving experience. On the way to dinner, our guide made a quick stop to share the beautiful Blue Temple, a must-see in Chiang Rai. Chai Yo! Chai Yo! 
now heading to Chiang Mai with a must-see stop at the White Temple created by a private artist in 1997. Absolutely stunning. Photos were not allowed inside. It was shocking to find the walls covered with history, including Michael Jackson, Pokemon, Bin Laden on a rocket with President Bush holding a peace sign, and so much more. Incredible. And be sure to make a pit stop in the Golden Throne. A hot spring made a nice stop along the route. We also had a learning and discovery opportunity at a rice mill. Chiang Mai, another lovely hotel with a great view. And let's kick it off with fish massage, a must try. We had a nice walking tour in the old city whose medieval walls encircled more than 30 active Buddhist temples. And a fabulous meal. One, two, three. The real highlights and the conclusion of this amazing journey came with our visit to a Long Neck village and the Elephant Echo Valley. The Karen Long Neck tribe, also known as the Giraffe Women, are famous for the long brass coils they wear around their necks, which they start wearing at the age of five. Per tradition, the more neck rings a woman carries on her neck, the more beautiful she is. Later, the tradition evolved so that only girls who were born at a particular time of month were destined to wear the neck rings. Elephant Echo Valley, where elephants are in good hands and whose mission is to share the elephant's history, their culture, their current environment, and their relationship with the human species, compassionately and scientifically. Okay, as you know, elephants, they ate so much food, yeah. and they will drop down a lot of poop poop as well. My heart is so full. It was such a beautiful experience. Kapunka, thank you, and see you next time. You had sound problems, and that's the first time I've heard that. There was just a little, a couple of times when there was something that you were talking about and the kind of distorted a little bit. It was phased out. It was the phasing. Was that it? And, and then also your uh, mixing. Normally, the stuff, Sherry Lee, it's been really good. I This one was not up to your standards. What do you think? That it needed more volume on some of the music? Well, or? at the end, as an example, you overwhelmed us with water. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and then also there the the mixing, the the dipping, uh, wasn't what you usually do. It just hmm. 
to me anyway. That is well, there's I know there was a couple of times just with the like with the uh, rice when they were doing the rice stuff where it was really loud. Okay. But I think it maybe just some tweakage on that, just knock that down a little bit, that ambient noise. But you're just a you're a killer narrator. Yes. I mean, you just <laughs> make us want to go there and you do such a good job. Well, I would I would definitely agree. I mean, when you think of all these parts that she's done on this this trip. That would like for Holly's doing that thing that we're going to be showing here on Iceland of coming up here in a second, and you're talking at that travel club. Yeah, that yeah. should be yeah. put that all together into a one it. nice big video. An hour of that would be like fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Are you going to show this to the travel club with combined? Combine everything because they yeah. like those long. Oh, yeah, that's hard for me to watch a show for that long. But I'm going to try to get it together. Yeah, that's your own. So, so uh, when I play this back a couple times on my TV really loud so mm -hmm. that I can hear stuff. Right. And uh, and the train had been very, very loud. And I caught that. And so okay. I, I pulled that back. Um, there was some really bad pitch on the guy in the train talking near the end, so I got that reduced. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I, there were a few other places where I, where I definitely made some adjustments. So the what I'm hearing you say, then the rice needs to come down. They had um, the water, with the, the, water. The, the rice mill, and then the when the water Maybe the water was the overwhelm. There was one it had nothing to do with you. It's just something technically happened where there was a phasing issue with your voice okay. uh, and again nitpicking you know what i'll i'll well, i like nitpicking <laughs> <laughs> well that's good because you're getting nitpicked <laughs> yeah. but I, seriously the travel club not not the one that right. the camera that showed the, the travel log travel log, travel log. Like yeah. the photography yeah. club um <laughs> well the travel log was like one piece right yeah. they like they like, like and they get them Sure. Yeah. They love long. You put those together, I think they can go for it. You know, I'll listen to that when I do the mix down on this, and I will tell you at what point I could hear that phasing issue in your narration. It was about two thirds of the way in, but it was only for just yeah five well, seconds. It was very short. I guess the question is how how loud was Bryce Mill? Very loud. You mean in terms of yeah. in the, the video? video. Or in just I'm talking about in the video itself. Oh, in the video. It could be the reason the rice mill sound was overwhelming. It's noisy. I mean, yeah. it's really yeah. noisy. So, but I so guess I if, we, if you if you tone that down, does that take away from the well, experience? Yeah, actually, the experience. Uh, yeah. I, I, my it's thought would be here. that when you're looking at your meters, because you have yeah, meters that you can things, see. Yeah. You, you want to kind of see where your voice is, where your music is, and then with something like that, if that comes in way hot, um, remember we were talking about that, Holly, like was that a week or two ago? Yeah. And she had real big swings with her narration and the music in terms of super, super loud. Mm -hmm. It's Again, these are just minor little things, but you just adjust that down a little bit. And I'm not saying to knock it all the way down. I'm just right. saying to knock it down just a little bit if if I'm sitting there and I'm watching something and I have to turn the volume up or down on the TV, then something's going on that's too much. You'd like it to yeah. be consistent. So, but I'll we'll we'll talk about that. But just on basics on sound, Hill's more expert on this than right. I am. But I use Audacity, which more people I are did. Too, probably. I used Audacity on it. My approach has always been to. Do the narration obviously separately from everything else. Yeah. Set the narration yep. at the maximum that I wanted at. Yep. For me, is two or three decibels below clipping. Yep. <clears throat> then you just have everything else on another track. Yep. And you just bring it below that. Yep. Then you can dip it um, below that. Exactly. Give, enough, give it a good, a good slow dip and mm -hmm. rise. I would agree. That's. I mean, always setting your narration first is. With your levels, you want to base everything off of that, and then from there you can adjust music, ambient sound accordingly. So yeah, Larry's hundred percent. Yeah. What about bird sense? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was genuine to hear the 
you know, real loud. You need a light camp that you don't want to screw up the experience. It was loud. <laughs> right. Well, good job on that. I, yeah, I this, this whole this whole series that you've done on this trip has been excellent. Absolutely excellent. So I, I'd say well done. And when's the next trip? Yeah. Yeah, April. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 That Fred guy, he's always around. We're going to Scotland in Ireland. Wow. Man, yeah. you were getting it all in. That passport book is going to be full of stamps. <laughs> yep. We just had to get a new one for my husband. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And you're talking travel club. I'll yeah. be showing it on Friday. At oh, nine o'clock. Yeah. Oh, at Las Campanas. What was the just briefly before how how you think? What was that thing you were going to talk about, Larry? I forgot about that. You had that yellow paper. What was that? Thank the you. The film festival. Yeah. Okay. Um, I thought we were going to talk about it last week, but uh, we didn't. Oh. <laughs> uh, and uh, John Graham and I were the only uh, Green Valley, not Green Valley, the only camera club people. There. Okay. Um, but there were one or two other Green Valley people. Um, he shortened it up this year uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, the Friday night shorts ran from, uh, what, 6.30 till 9 o'clock or something. Larry, tell them what it is. Where is it? Oh, sorry. Okay. This is the Ari Vaca Film Festival. Um, Bart Santello has been running it since... About 2010. I okay. started showing in 2013. And uh, Friday night is generally for local people that present things. And then Saturday are various uh, films that he has found, and he finds them all over the place. Okay. Uh, some of the high, the Friday night ones were, yeah. This year, <laughs> but I didn't have one there. So oh, there you go. <laughs> Saturday uh, was was great. Um, I can't remember how many were there. Seven or nine or something. Yeah. Seven, yeah. And uh, there, there were only a couple that were yeah, but the rest were great. I, you know, you look at anything, you say some are good and some are better. Sure. Um, one of the things that was really interesting was he's. He found a film that was made in Arivaca hmm. in 1980. Wow. Uh, 1980. He found uh, the film in Holland. Hmm. There's wow. an archive there. And this stuff is old and deteriorated. And huh. he's been working at this. And he had one nine minute segment that he's completed so far. Hmm. And he was showing on a side by side uh, clip. In the interest, what he started with, right, or the, in, in the introduction, what he started with, what he wound up with, and he yeah. talked about the various things he had to work with using some kind of artificial intelligence system to hmm. start with, and then going on from that to clean things up. So that that was interesting. Is this a theatrical film, or yeah, yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was called Revenge of Dakota. Hmm. Um, and uh, that's what he called it. Sorry, it was called Trail to Yesterday. It was originally made in Dutch, and uh, it had a different name that he had hmm. said as well, uh, but I can't recall. How many more weeks is this film festival going on? It isn't. It's a long oh, weekend it, thing. Oh, it was it. So it's fresh. It's been and done. Yeah, yeah. It's all yeah. perfect. Well, damn. But but he's going to show another clip that he's restored next year. Okay. From the same movie. Cool. And it's really fascinating to see how he's repaired this thing, and also just to see Aravaca. Sure. In, what was it? Nineteen eighteen. Nineteen eighteen. Wow. And he started getting interested on in this. He was. Oh, yeah. I think he said he was on a train with some woman just chatting away. Huh. And she. Brought up this film. <laughs> wow. Well, that's great. Yeah. Okay. You know, next year, can somebody remind us of that? <laughs> when that, I mean, obviously before the film festival happens. I think he did. I do every year. So. She did. He did. <laughs> I must have been just Gummies that day. I don't know what to do. Photo opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, a weekend in March, right? Yeah, for photo opportunity. 
first weekend in March. But for photo opportunities, we're looking at things you can take pictures yes. of typically, but I can always run that in the head. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, please do, Larry. And this is of course for the small select group, which gives the multimedia group. Sure. Oh no, we want to broaden our horizons, right? Um, no, I think it's great. Sorry, I'm being snarky. Oh, <laughs> it's not a small media group. It's like the rain, small but elite. <laughs> Prior to COVID, um, Bart, Bart used to come to our multimedia class. Yeah, he, he was here. A yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, he's still working on the contract up in Phoenix. Hmm. So he likes making money too. Well, there you go. Well, uh, don't it, this yeah, sure. don't just well don't expect a nice theater. Right. This is this, this room is like the plaza compared <laughs> to where he has his film festival. A little gritty and earthy, is that what you're saying? Oh, was it the town hall? It's on uh, well, it's not that big. It's so. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's the second dirt road to the left. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so all right. Well, thank you for that. Okay. Holly, why don't you tell us about your Iceland video? Okay. Well, thank this you. is uh, last time I showed you part two, and I got a lot of helpful comments that I incorporated and hopefully will continue to incorporate into the next part one as far as uh, working on the sound and so on. And it's um, it's like 17 minutes because the intended, the intended audience really is Travel Club, the two pieces of it for Travel Club. So um, that'll be shown tomorrow, as Larry said. No, Friday, Larry? Friday. Thursday or Friday? Friday okay. at nine in the morning, if anybody's up that early. That's why Larry doesn't have sunrise time lapse. Ah. He's not there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Walk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I and uh, Holly shared the, the link for this on YouTube, so that's where I got that this oh, morning. Oh, yes, I should say that too. Every time I come here, I learn something useful. And today I learned you have to be real careful when you load a, a click onto a thumb drive because it might be so little that that it doesn't show well. Yeah, yeah. Well, so she basically <laughs> well she outputted it at four eighty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's about that big. Instead of outputting it at 720 or 1080. So when she gave me the thumb drive today, I looked at it and was like, wow, we're really small. We're not like this. So anyway, this is in high def off of YouTube. So all right, here we go. Iceland is located between the North American and Eurasian tectonic plates. You can actually walk between the two. As the land uplifts and moves and comes together, it often forms crevices which catch water and result in spectacular waterfalls in Iceland. Walk behind this waterfalls and make a wish. We were told it's sure to come true. The molten magma forms plumes under the mid-Atlantic ridge, and that forms hot spots on the crust. Sometimes water then is heated there and breaks through as geysers.
Sometimes the magma itself erupts and becomes lava as it flows out of the peak of a volcano and later cools to form volcanic rock. Hot magma may cause hot springs, which are harnessed for energy and for pure enjoyment in hot springs like the Blue Lagoon. Lava cools in odd ways sometimes, forming unusual artistic creations of the earth. In beaches, the rock is broken down by the wave action and wind action and eventually forms the famous black sand beaches. We flew to Iceland on September 27, 2023 and landed in Keflavik, Iceland, just south of the Arctic Circle. Our trip was from New York. Our Icelandic guide, Oslog Marina's daughter, explained island effects. Iceland, like Maine, is an island that's cool with rocky shores. Its highest peak is almost 7,000 feet. It's surrounded by the Arctic Ocean on the north and the North Atlantic to the south. And just south of the Arctic Circle is quite cool. The high altitudes and latitudes cause snow not to melt, and Europe's largest glacier is in Iceland. September 28th, it snowed in Reykjavik, and the snow continued in the highlands all during our trip. Glaciers form when melting, calving, and evaporation is slower than ice formation. Many of Iceland's glaciers are receding and Lofslagsbreitanger glacier has disappeared. A glacier calves directly into the sea and we walked to the beaches looking at icebergs, hoping for a better look. We were able to get that when we took a ride on this amphibious craft right into the lagoon.
Can you repeat that? No. 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 Of course. <laughs> that was never a question. <laughs> Well, Breidamerkur Jökull is in Vatna Jökull and Vatna Jökull is the biggest glacier in Iceland and also in Europe. And uh, if you go back in time to the year 1930, this lagoon here was covered with glacier, this glacier over there, all around to the bridge. And then it got in touch with the ocean and started to melt very fast. Because this water here is 50% salt water and 50% fresh water. The, the salt from the ocean and press from the glacier and uh, this lagoon here is the only lagoon which have connection with the ocean in Iceland and uh, the salt here is the enemy of the ice and the icebergs and uh, this lagoon retreats uh, fastest of them all here. Our helper in a wetsuit actually retrieved some glacial ice for us to hold. Clear as that was, sometimes the icebergs were darkened by volcanic sand. We said goodbye to the lagoon and went ashore for an evening full of more glaciers. Driving along Iceland's south shore, we saw other glaciers and we wondered how long Iceland citizens and tourists would be able to enjoy them. Iceland's main airport in Keflavik is fairly normal, except for an unusual sculpture and some Scandinavian influence. Iceland's capital, Reykjavik, contains 36% of Iceland's population, and it has a beautiful, modern city skyline. Most of the buildings we saw were made of cement with clean lines and sturdy roofs. Iceland's population of approximately 380,000 is concentrated on the coasts. In contrast, the population of Maine is nearly one million more. A variety of building styles is in evidence. Few, though, are wood. Iceland was mainly deforested in its early days. Wood was used for fuel and for building ships.
uh, uh, be a little bit vulnerable. So we have to have good material. So the uh, even the concrete houses do resist uh, against the climate. All built to last. Lighthouses, even picnic tables. Of course, climate has been a challenge in Iceland since it was first settled in the 9th century. Early homes are preserved as museums. Some are even caves. We visited an historic village. This home was built from wood from a shipwreck. More modern buildings generally were concrete. Iceland runs almost entirely on renewable resources, much of it geothermal. We visited the flower village, located in the middle of a geothermal area. It has many hot springs and greenhouses. We'll head back to Reykjavik for a brief stay before we go on to part two of Iceland, land of fire, land of ice. Okay, what do we think? What do we think of that? Do we think of anything? <laughs> Just in the, in the lead in section and everything, it seems like your titles were moving way too fast. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the top line seemed to be shorter text. And so right. you could read that, but then the bottom one go breezing by. It seemed like, but if we can slow that down, that'll clean that up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I found that distracting also because I was trying to see the image, but then I'm trying to read that by so I'm not really seeing the, the, the image behind. So. Maybe if you shorten that sum or put it yeah. across the bottom. Sure. 
Oh, definitely. I, um, sometimes you can go in and put in a little band, uh, a translucent band that would maybe be, let's say, 20, 30 percent. Uh, yeah, their first section of the idea the is a separate movie. And, and then, then I dropped it into this new movie and the other one too, the second part. I probably should redo it, the first section. And I think that's what it really would take is redo that whole clip. It's now a clip. I can't redo it in the present movie. I can take it out. And then, but I can't edit in the present movie. I have to go to where I originally the did, first clip. And then take it out. Redo it. I can do it. I thought the one thing that you, I think you did better in this one than the, the one we saw before your balance of music and narration. There was a couple of spots where it was a little off, but for the most part, yeah. I thought you did a better job of not pulling the ambient sound or the music too far down or or anything. So it seemed like you did a little better job of that. Yeah, I tried that. I tried to <laughs> what was that too much awkward thing? Was that something you two? <laughs> yes, that is the, that, the end of the YouTube. <laughs> that's that's nice. Well, what it's okay. doing is it's saying, hey, guess what's coming up next? Yeah, and right, so right. that's why it's over the top. That's why I want people to know that it was on. I got that off of YouTube for today. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yes. See, it wants to go to your next video. That's what it wants. So, okay. It should be part two, but I haven't put part two on there yet. Okay. So I did have one question. It was a statistic that you had up there. You said something affected. 70 some percent were Christian and 60 some percent were um, Church of Iceland, Church of Iceland, and 25 percent no religion, right? Yeah. I'd like to know well, Christian, oh, the Church of Iceland is a uh, Lutheran kind of thing, it did add up, it did add up, yeah, it didn't add up. Yeah. It's it's like 80 percent are cat are Christian and 70 percent are Catholic. That right. can be that's true, you, you know what I mean? It's true in certain areas. I have no idea. <laughs> the Those stats made them yeah. sense. Yeah. And then you have a 25% yeah. reception. Yeah. Yeah. I understood that. <laughs> Your man doesn't all add up to the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's the <laughs> Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I understand. I think the music was a little bit too suspenseful. Oh, like it was like. Well, it's scary for, and so to me. Well, the, I think the that second that last half when you got into the architecture and stuff, there was kind of it was a little bit of almost horror film yeah, yeah, in yeah. terms of the music. Yeah. That's one of my favorite pieces. That's <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to scare us. <laughs> and as we as as we talk about music, is very subjective. What somebody likes, somebody else doesn't like. So, uh, but I it, there was a little bit of that, like that yeah. ghosty thing going. It's to be like Arctic wind. <laughs> okay. Hey Holly, what are you editing with? He's an iMovie. 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 Um, if you notice the push ins and pull outs are all jerky, but I don't think I think that's just a product of what you're using. It, I don't think it's the playback. No, I. The thing I would probably look at is, especially when you start get really big files here in terms of these videos are so long that you might get some of that jerkiness. Chokes, huh? Yeah, that uh, on the because almost all of those were just. It'd be interesting to see it, not off of YouTube, but I think it's in the original. So okay, sometimes with some of these things, and I and I even noticed that like in Final Cut, sometimes something it's just not rendered right. Meaning it, yeah, it's no, getting a little no, bit of no, jerk, and you that. say, "Okay, re-render it," and now it looks good. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, again, that's just a good. The other thing, and just quickly, is a is a quick goodie. Be aware of your horizon lines. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know we have There's a couple. That's a lot of them, but there are some like when we were in that amphibious craft. Well, then I don't even. <laughs> then I don't think it, it, it's your it's your still photos. Yeah, you had some stuff at the end where like the sea is like this. Yeah. So I just I that's always a big thing for me. I noticed that, uh, and I've often said when I'm shooting still photography and I'm holding that camera, I'm always two percent off. Always, 
I'm never perfectly straight unless I'm on a tripod. So trust me, I'm there, but I do notice that. And that would be something that I would look at again, if you're going to go back and fix some stuff. Yeah. Because you can rotate in iMovie and you can straighten sure. that horizon out. You can. And right in that right. crop tool, there's. Yeah, I know the crop tool. In that crop tool, I think yeah. you can you can uh, make an adjustment. Okay. Hey, Holly, I won't comment on the whole film, but <laughs> I love that woman doing fire and ice. Yeah. Oh, know. Emily Marvach. I, yeah. Oh, that is just. That she's, is so good. Michigan project and did that just for me. Just to say it. Really? Yeah. I love it. I think it's great. And I didn't know I was going to Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fan. Does anybody have anything else they would like to add before we shut down Sean today? We good? good? All right. We meet again next week on the 20th. We will be here in the club and also our Zoomers. And, oh, we're not open next week? No, no. no. You're, you're here. Yeah, I'm here, but I'm, you're not going to be here too. Yeah. Right. Oh, I thought it was next week. Okay. Yes, don't mind Phil. He's interrupting. We'll be here on the 20th right here in the club. All right, everybody, have a good one. We'll be talking to you. Thanks so much.